Hello and welcome to Rooted and Unwithered. I'm Cole Newton, and the following is a continuation of our meditations through the New City Catechism. And so today we are in question 25, which asks, Does Christ's death mean all our sins can be forgiven? The answer, yes. Because Christ's death on the cross fully paid the penalty for our sins, God will remember our sins no more. Having addressed the necessity of Christ's death in the previous question, our present question now considers the sufficiency of Christ's sacrificial and atoning death. Does Christ's death mean all our sins can be forgiven? The answer to this question is what makes the gospel good news. Yes, because Christ's death on the cross fully paid the penalty for our sin, God graciously imputes Christ's righteousness to us as if it were our own and will remember our sins no more. The New City Catechism cites 2 Corinthians 5.21 and does so for good reason, which says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That is the very crux of the issue. Christ took our sin upon himself so that we can be imputed with his righteousness. That is the marvelous means by which we are made righteous so that God will remember our sins no more. However, that verse does not explicitly address what the question itself is asking. Can all of our sins be forgiven? Therefore, how can we know scripturally that Christ's death on the cross fully paid for the penalty for our sins? I think Hebrews chapter 7 through 10 is one of the greatest explanations in all of scripture for the complete sufficiency of Christ's death to cleanse us of all of our sins. Indeed, the whole thing could simply be read in answer to this question, but consider Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 through 26, which says, For Christ has entered, not into the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So in these verses, the author of Hebrews tells us that Jesus' priestly ministry was not performed in the earthly tabernacle or temple, which are copies of true things. Instead, our Lord worked the true day of atonement before the actual heavenly throne of God. Nor did Christ make his sacrifice repeatedly as the Levites did, which was a sign of their insufficiency to truly forgive sins. Instead, Christ's death was once for all. Christ's one-time sacrifice is wholly sufficient for all in two senses, for all of God's people and for all of their sins. So though Christ died 2,000 years ago, his sacrificial death applies to all who have trusted in him since then. But his atoning death also applied retroactively, reaching back even to the very first humans. Thus, any faith that the Old Testament saints had of salvation was ultimately looking forward to Christ's coming. Although they knew not Jesus' name, they had faith in God's plan to rescue them fully and finally from their sins. And so thus, Christ's one-time sacrifice was sufficient for all of God's people. Christ's one-time sacrifice is also sufficient for all of our sins. Christ put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Jesus did by his own blood what the blood of animals could never do. He put away sin. Of course, this is not saying that his death fully eliminated all sin. Sadly, each day we testify that that is not so. Instead, he put away sin by dealing fully and finally with its consequences. He has paid the debt and it no longer stands against us. Thus, as we saw last week, he was purified for our consciences by dealing fully with the guilt that our sins have accumulated. Again, Jesus has done this by the sacrifice of himself. As both truly man and truly God, Christ alone was worthy to work our salvation, to purchase the forgiveness of our sins. And brothers and sisters, this is why we confess the forgiveness of sins as a doctrine within the Apostles' Creed. It is a truth to be believed, not a work to be accomplished. Christ has already accomplished the work. Now all that stands is for us to believe in its truth. Thank you so much for listening. For more resources for knowing and loving God's word, please visit bcnewton.co. And until next time. 
grace and peace.